Today we are going to answer the question, what is better, the forehand or the backhand? What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are gonna be doing the forehand versus backhand challenge today. We're out here again at Dash's track. If you didn't see my video out here before, you can click up here to watch that. But we're gonna be doing a backhand versus forehand challenge. So every tee pad, I'm gonna be throwing a backhand. Then I'll be throwing a forehand. I'm gonna be playing that disc all the way until it's in the basket and keeping score. And we're gonna see after six holes, what am I better at, backhand or forehand? What do I need to work on? I think there's a good kind of drill or challenge or practice that you guys can do to make you have to throw shots that you're not comfortable. For me, whenever I step up to this hole one, it's always a backhand meteor, but it's gonna be good for me to test it and try to throw maybe a forehand buzz and see how I do. So it should be a fun video and let's jump into it right now. Before we start, let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys prefer, the backhand or the forehand? Hole one, going with the meteor for the backhand. Take it right, baby. Oh, bad kick left. Forehand time, going with the buzz. Oh, that looked real good. Oh, I just hit the tree. All right, those are warm-up shots. We can get up and down from there. If you guys didn't see, I just came out with my new Dark Horse 3 pack. It comes with a Brody Buzz Dark Horse and a Dark Horse Roach, which is actually in the Brody plastic as well. Those are available at discraft.com slash Brody Smith. The link will be in the description down below. Also, if you haven't, the Get Freaky still might be out, probably isn't. Check those. Thanks so much for all the support, guys. I really do appreciate it. Right now, times are kind of crazy. So we're out here trying to film some stuff for you to be able to watch at home hopefully give you a little bit of enjoyment when times are a little rough right now. So the forehand was actually shaping out to be pretty good. I think it connected with one of these trees or whatever and shot down here. I've got a decent look at it. Unfortunately, it's gonna be a little bit of a low ceiling because of the tree in front of me. So I'm just gonna probably try to throw a putt that I've been working on, which is the Anheuser putt, basically releasing the disc more on an angle like this. So that allows it to fly and then flip over and get more glide so I can throw it further. Not really trying to make it. If it goes in, great, but really just try to get something super close. Didn't actually even give it an attempt. My foot kind of slipped out. If you haven't noticed, we've had a lot of rain here in Dallas. Uh, the Dallas mud, if you know, you know. Well, this is not a great spot. A lot of trees around me. But I actually want to give it a chance. I probably have to kind of straddle out here and then throw something super hyzer around. We're going to try that. The wind's probably not really going to help it, but we'll see. Yep, the wind just kind of pushed it down, but two tap ins for par. about five pounds heavier than normal. I already kind of have super heavy legs. Now, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting out of control in hole one. Hole two, it's a little par three, dog leg left. I almost always throw a backhand here. Probably more my jawbreaker zone. Don't know what I'm gonna do for a forehand yet. So we're just gonna do the backhand play. This actually might be a better get freaky. Last time I played this course, I actually didn't have my get freaky. This actually might be a little bit better because I kind of want a little bit more overstable. Normally I'm kind of long on this one too and this will kind of get down into the ground quicker. Keep going. Keep going. Oh yeah. Oh, that's freaking parked. Alright. Now I got to reset. Normally I would just walk up, tap in. What the heck am I doing forehand? Try to see if there's maybe like a hyzer spike forehand shot. It's gonna have to be not a forehand roller. It might be like a delicate forehand meteor. I've never actually thrown a forehand meteor before, but I wonder, I wonder if I can make this happen. 
Just a little outside in. Yeah, I'm not lying. That was my very first ever forehand meteor throw and the wind kind of saved me. We are walking up on both of the backhand and forehand and they're right next to each other. Literally right next to each other. Just parked. So. Well, now it just comes down to putting. This one's actually a little bit further away. Oh my gosh. He practices these putts all the time in the garage. Garage putt. There we go. Very hard to get your footing here. It's almost, it's almost all upper body because you can't really push because your foot's going to slip. Oh, the tree of two. Oh, no. Gosh. I, I'm trying to think. Maybe I should have gone straddle. What do you guys think? Do you, do you go straddle when your feet are just absolutely slippery? Because normally I use that back foot to like push off. I couldn't get a push. All right, well, what is that? Was that Three one for two. the forehand? Three and two. Yeah, one for the forehand. We're gonna get freaky here. Hole three, it's about 185 feet. Again, normally I go forehand, just kind of right at the gap and just have it set over. Anything inside that tree up by the uh, basket is pretty much inside circle one and this is actually a good tip that Paul gave me in one of our rounds to understand where some landmarks are it's sometimes when you're looking at a basket you think like you got to put it right underneath the basket and you don't realize like hey if I just throw it next to that tree I have a 20 footer so instead of like maybe going for a more difficult shot that can get you in trouble go for the easier shot that's still gonna give you a 20 foot birdie look that's all you're really looking so anything inside that tree up by the basket is money Normally, if I had to choose, I'd probably go with a meteor, have something be able to fade to the right. It's so windy, as you can probably tell, that I'm going to try to throw the buzz. I think it's going to make it, if I throw it flat, it's going to make it turn over a little bit and then hopefully straighten out at the basket. It's not great, but it's a putt. I want something to fight the wind a little bit. The jawbreaker zones, I think, is great, but I think these uh, get freakies fight the wind a little bit better, especially with this kind of headwind that we got here. Throw some flat, let it fade over at the end. Kind of like that. Skip on over. Skip on over. All right. Inside circle one, that's fine. I don't really have a posting schedule, so to make sure you don't miss any videos, click the subscribe button down below. Also, turn on your post notifications so you get alerted every time I post. And like every video, if you guys can drop a like, helps out a lot, really appreciate it. What the heck? Johannesburg is warming up for the next video? <laughs> wow. This is Brody's forehand throw? Uh, this is backhand. Backhand throw. Uh, wiping his shoes off just a little bit. Like he said, it is really windy out here, so it hasn't. What is happening? It hasn't gusted yet, so hopefully when he throws, the wind doesn't take the disc with it. Good job. Here is a forehand get freaky. I don't know if you can see it, but oh, put McGee, put McGee. All right. So what is that? Forehand is two under. Backhand is one under. All right. Not the worst, not the best. So this is the tee box for hole four. Um, he's about to... Rain, shine, no. mud, I don't care. I'm disc golfing all the time. No, you're about to Omari on this. What's Omari? I got my ice box with my heart. You, too. you know the music video where he's dancing in the rain? And he's no, like that's kicking. Jason Derulo. Okay, I think all... Oh. I feel like everyone has done it, but... Yeah, Jake, Justin Bieber also has that, too. Uh, I need to put my bag way over here. Here, I'll hold your bag. It's heavy. I'll hold your bag. I'm over. All right, hole four, 185 feet. So I would normally throw a forehand here. Again, last time I played this course, I didn't have to get freakies. This is a game changer right here. I just throw it basically at this gap, and then it's going to slice over to the right. 
cozy up for hopefully a tap in. I'm gonna hold this in my hand too because I do not want it to get this junk on. Do you want me to hold it? No, like that's okay. I'm here. Okay, I can yeah, help you. you. Hold it. I'm gonna stand still because I'm in like two inches of water. From Lake Dash, brought to you by BWS Productions. This is hole four, Brody Smith. Going with the forehand, get freaky. Oh, he. Oh, go in. Oh. Go in. Oh. It had a chance. It had a chance. Did you like my commentary? Yeah, it was actually really good. All right, on this one though, Johannesburger, you're gonna have to back up because I'm getting real freaky. So Brody, still on hole four. He told me to back up. Going backhand. Looks like he's aiming pretty high. You know, about two inches of water. Tap dancing over there. <laughs> <laughs> he is throwing it oh. over. I know. Shot down. I didn't even see where that went. Shot down, Tatiana, for me. Did you just say bust down, Tatiana? I said drop down. Oh it's God. close. It's actually decently close. Tap dance. <laughs> Got the get freaky right here. That's the forehand throw. And then the backhand one over the trees soared. It's about a 30 foot. 30 feet? Uh, no, it's probably inside that. Not by much, though. Just inside circle one. Just inside circle one. Putts McGee. Oh. Y'all, yeah, it's windy. It is windy! Is the forehand dominating right now? The forehand is winning. The forehand is winning. I gotta maybe rethink how to judge which one's doing better because my putts haven't been as good on the back end. Pole five, 165 feet. We're gonna bust out the other, the camo get freaky on this one. Again, another hole that I used to go jawbreaker zone, but I think it just fits this a lot better. It's a sharp dog leg to the right. Just gotta throw it through these little gaps right here in the trees and then let that thing kind of skip on down to the basket. All right, we're actually gonna go tight gap, go a little for an ace run here. I normally don't go for aces, but I'm feeling freaky. Oh, that has a chance. No chance. I don't foresee myself, other than throwing a crazy roller and having mud all over my disc, getting close. So we're gonna do a little shout out to my buddy Simon Lazat. We're gonna go for a Simon line is what they're called. And that's just basically throwing something absolutely crazy that no one else throws. Ooh. Honestly, I have a putt. I'll take it. Well, your forehand on this one is. Look at the chains, they're all to the one side of the basket. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh! It tried to fly out like it's the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh, all right. Well, to say the least, this next putt's gonna be fun. He walking up to his Simon backhand, just outside of Circle One. The wind, sorry, is ripping. Kind of dies, kind of comes. Don't underestimate it. He's going with a scooper in the wind. Oh! oh. <laughs> In the wind? Just slicing and dicing through that wind, baby. <laughs> oh my god. Woohoohoo! So two for two. Let's go. All right, here we are. Final hole, hole six. Straight uphill into the wind. I'm actually busting out this new zone I got from Chandler Fry. It's a Z. I think it's kind of in between the jawbreaker and my get freaky. So we're going to try it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, late tree kick. It's gonna be a testing putt. We're going Dark Horse Buzz, Pinky. All right, that should be fine. Just skipped up to the trees. It's a bit of a situation behind the basket. This is the perfect frame that I'm gonna do. Brody's walking up to his forehand throw right there. Just inside circle one. Wind is very inconsistent, so not sure what he's feeling, but these are garage putts. Makes them all the time. 
There we go. Just gotta throw a last spin on them, you know? Hey, uh, since you haven't really done well on your backhand putting, you want me to put this, the lead putt? Wow, shot's fired. Yeah, you can putt. <laughs> this actually will warm you up for our next video. We're gonna do a video where Kelsey's actually gonna be playing, so stay tuned for that. Okay, Kelsey. Yeah, it's really hot out here. I'm not really quite sure what you dress for, but she has this straddle putt for the birdie. Oh my gosh. Wow, she actually made it. Oh, and she's doing a celebration dance just to spite me. Wow. All right. We'll see how you do in the next video, Johannesburger. Well, what did we learn today, guys? I think what we learned is some holes are much better for backhands and some holes are much better for forehands. Ideally, you should be able to be comfortable with both. If you struggle with one, spend more time on that one. I know it's a sport that we all love to do the things that we're really good at, but to improve, I think focusing on the stuff that we struggle with is gonna actually make you a lot better of a disc golfer. So for me, I think sometimes I need to work on a little bit of my angle control and whatnot off the tee, but all in all, hopefully this was a fun video for you guys. We had a blast out here. Make sure you go and check out my Dark Horse 3-pack uh, the link will be in the description down below. Subscribe, like, do all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the next one. Keep slinging them discs!